Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a voice recording to do a setup I'm seeing on Twitter from Maya by a node system called by Frost. So let's start. So here we in Blender, as always, I'm going to use the presets which you can download for free from the link in the description. Actually, there is really nothing to really discuss. Uh, I make a sphere and uh, I'm going to use a collision deformer. I've uh, shown a uh, similar kind of a soft body animation or demonstration in the past, but uh, no one were interested in it, so I barely talked anything about it. But the core concept should be very easy. I initially made these presets in order to replicate the one in Cinema 4D. But since we do not have source code of Cinema 4D, this is more kind of ugly replicate of yet, and uh, it must not be perfect. That's why I always try to replicate those setup or animation by other software in order to prove the concept of this preset. By principle, it's uh, just a recast node. So that whenever you detect the collision, you try to mix with the current position, with the hit position, and so on. Okay. And in, on top of that, uh, you made much more settings to deal with special needs you want. But uh, basically what you need is you need a geometry and you need a collider. So let's make a collider. Let's make a cylinder. And let's just uh, model that to make a thin rods kind of structure. And I'm going to move that above. Here I'm going to import this cylinder object into the node tree. And I plug this geometry into the collider. So immediately you see there's the two cylinders and you enable relative. Then you will use the relative position of our cylinder. Now you will find the kind of weird shadings when you are panning in the viewports because there's two cylinders at the same position causing Z findings. What you can do is either you hide one cylinder, then you lose the control of it, or you can just disable this joint collider geometry. So now you only have one cylinder in the viewport. Okay. And now if you try to move this cylinder, you can see there is already kind of a depression effect from this collision deformer. So this is the basic form. Several things I want to remind you is that one, it's, a, uh, it's influenced by the amount of subdivision you have. Here in this particular case, instead of using the UV sphere, I'm going to use the ICO sphere. So that we can increase the amount of subdivision more easily. And you can see the depression very well in extreme mode. There are lots of settings that you can parallel around, but I think uh, the default values are good enough. And if you don't know what you are doing, then you may want to keep them as they are. Okay. Uh, what I really want to discuss later, however, is that uh, the original demonstration is very interesting because the sphere uh, behave, behaves like a bloom that uh, you compress one area, you have a bulging effect in other areas. So bulging effect by itself can be thought as a normal displacement if you plug a normal displacement, you can see every part is bulging into their normal. But I want to restrict this bulging effect to parts where it's close to this collision event. So we need a fourth. So I already constructed a fourth, as you can see from the X-ray, where the colliding part is white, but uh, other stationary part is still black. And I want this white part to diffuse outside to the black part. 
So it's very simple. We just use a blur attribute. And you just type a high amount of iteration, maybe 125. Then you can see the original black part is becoming white. And then we're plugging these blurred attributes into the displacement. Then you can see the bulging event only occurs into some parts of it. But you also notice a problem that the center part is bulging as well because that's the origin of this collision event, which is white. It's very easy to solve this problem that we just do a subtraction from the original fourth. So you can see the center becomes dark, but the outside is still, is still white. And we can do a clamp so that uh, every value is from zero to one so that there will not be negative value to displace inside. And we can do a multiply just to change the values so that the white part becomes wider. And then we plug this value into the displacement, then it becomes like this. So you need to tweak this amplitude to make it nicer. And you, of course, can try to tweak this uh, blur attribute to change this fourth and uh, displacement. So now if we try to move these rods, it does not only collide, but you have a kind of bulging effect at the same time. I think uh, essentially the rest is to tweak the settings. Uh, I think in the original demonstration, this rod is a little bit larger so that uh, when you collide, uh, the normal goes the other way. But now it actually feels like it's being attracted somewhere. Mm, I think there are lots of things that we need to tweak. Let's do another smooth position. Hmm, it's kind of a tricky question. Let's do a subdivision surface. Subdivide mesh. I don't think it's necessary. And it doesn't really help. Because what I actually feel is that uh, when you collide, it feels like kind of attraction forces is being applied which makes me worry a little bit. So I think I need to subtract some blurred attributes as well. Yeah, so I think this is fine. So that it doesn't go up, but it always go uh, besides. Because after this subtraction, more parts will be deleted. Okay. So I think this is good. And we just multiply with larger number and yeah I think this is fine and as a last step since it doesn't really cost anything uh, I'm just going to add a initial deformer. It's just a one node thing. 
Uh, I am planning to make a tutorial for this inertial deformer, but I don't have time these days. So let's play this animation. You can see if I touch, there's a bouncy event. Yeah. Boing, boing. Which is nice. Yeah, I think this is yet. So I don't know if you've learned anything, but anyway, this is yet. So I hope you enjoy this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.